now, the dramatic impact of the underwater volcanic eruption in Tonga has been filmed by Niwa researchers. They've just got back from a month at sea on a mission to map the seabed. And here to tell us what they found is Niwa's chief ocean scientist, Mike Williams. Mike, thank you very much for being with us and sharing this information. From a scientist's perspective, but I guess also from a personal perspective, where does being involved in an expedition like this rank in terms of, of your career and the work that you do? Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Um, for me, this is just one of the most exciting things that's really come up in the 20 years that I've been at NIWA. Um, we saw how big this eruption was on the 15th of January and thought there's just... It, just going to be huge changes in the ocean. Um, we saw the we saw Hunga, Tonga Hunga Hapai uh, Island disappear, and we thought there'd be similarly dramatic changes underwater. So, so getting up there and seeing that the changes weren't as dramatic um, is really interesting for us. How uh, big was the area of disruption that we're talking about underwater? Well, the area we mapped was out to um, 50 kilometres around the um, volcano. Um, so it's about an area of 8,000 square kilometres. And, and over most of that, we saw um, sort of complete destruction of the seabed uh, with either um, new mud and debris that, that settled down on the seabed or um, what was there before just scoured away. Wow. And, and so I, I was reading here that it was seven cubic kilometres displaced material, which yep. is the equivalent of about three million Olympic-sized swimming pools. Yeah, it's about three million Olympic-sized swimming pools or five Wellington harbours. Um, so it's a lot of it's a lot of material. And what kind of damage has that done to marine life? Um, well, it's essentially a, um, obliterated the, the marine life on the seabed where it's landed. Um, that seabed's now covered in um, a sort of mixture of ash and sediment that's um, hardened like concrete. So all of the seabed, all of the life that lives on the seabed or or in the seabed. Um, has really been smothered. Um, but fortunately we've also found some areas where uh, life's continued. So these are neighbouring seamounts and um, so the picture's not all doom and gloom. Is there any evidence that there is still volcanic activity going on? Yeah, that was one of the things that really surprised us. Um, so we are seeing uh, volcanic ash that's come out from the volcano it hasn't made it into the air, but it's um, settled out in the water, um, and it's sort of a beautiful volcanic type glass, and it's spreading out through the water um, at about 200 metres deep, um, and with it, there's a whole lot of nutrients and, and trace minerals. So there's a there's a bloom. There's, looks like there's been a bloom in marine life at that depth as well. Does that mean there is a danger it could erupt again? Um, we don't think it's likely to erupt. This was a this was a massive eruption. Um, the magma chamber underneath, we think, is probably um, well. It's, everything's been expelled from the magma chamber. Um, but I think that the risk with all uh, geological hazards is they're extremely difficult to predict. So I don't think we can we can say there is no risk, but it's very small. What has this expedition been able to tell you about how we can better predict or protect against these kinds of eruptions in the future? Well, one of the things that we've seen from this, this eruption is that with all the material being sort of shot almost straight up into the sky and dropping back down, um, these volcanoes can generate tsunami. Um, that wasn't something we expected before. Um, and these tsunami behave slightly different to the tsunami we've seen from um, generated by earthquakes. So it's helping us really understand what that risk is. And... Um, Tonga sits on, on an arc of volcanoes that spread from New Zealand up, up through the Pacific Islands, the Philippines and into Japan. So there's really wide international interest around um, how these volcanoes may behave and what might happen in the future with them. So how do we know or, or what work is going on to find out where these underwater volcanoes are around New Zealand and the Pacific? Well, one of the most um, important things we have to do is actually map the seabed. Um, surprisingly, most of the world's seabed hasn't been mapped, and um, we often hear the phrase that we know more about the moon than we do about the bottom of the ocean, and, and it's very true. Um, so we're part of a larger project called the Seabed 2030, which is designed to try and map all of the ocean seabeds by 2030 so that we right. can really see where these, 
where these risks lie. Yeah, Neva, uh, Chief Ocean Scientist Mike Williams, I'm sure there'll be more about that in the future. Uh, thanks very much for your time this morning, though.